It's over. The New York Rangers season is now finished. There's a big offseason coming up with Chris Drury, I'm sure, looking to make some potentially big moves to really try and make this team a whole lot better than what it was this season. Although it was a good team this year, you know, winning the President's Trophy, they're the best team in the regular season, as well as going all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals, losing in Game 6 there. This was a good overall season, although the end goal was to win the Stanley Cup, and that was not completed. This still was a pretty solid team, but there are some clear holes and some clear needs to fix with this Rangers team and I'm sure there's going to be some moves this offseason that hopefully will fix some of those issues. So let's take a look at this series here. Some of the good, some of the bad, some issues that I saw and some quotes as well and talk about some of the good stuff because there was, you know, some good things in this series, although there were some pretty big issues. So we're going to talk about all that stuff about this New York Rangers versus Florida Panthers Eastern Conference Finals Series starting off here with the elephant in the room for the Rangers and that was the power play. It was absolutely terrible. One for 15, 6.7% hit rate is awful. I know, you know, the Panthers are a good defensive team. They've got a good goaltender in net there in Sergei Bobrovsky. They are a good penalty killing team as well. But one for 15, 6.7% hit rate is just not acceptable. That is too bad. That is absolutely terrible. The Rangers had one of the best power plays in the entire NHL, the third best, and they end up falling flat here in the Eastern Conference Finals in the biggest series of this playoff run. That was terrible. Peter Laviolette did not decide to switch things up either, which was kind of disappointing in my opinion. I wanted to see Lafreniere get his shot on that top power play, but he did not switch it up there, especially in game six there. I kind of figured he would switch it up there because we did see so many different line changes on that lineup there going into game six. We did not see the power play switch up at all. They got one chance there and of course fell flat. So that was very disappointing there. The power play was atrocious. Penalty kill wasn't too bad, but definitely was not an elite either, although they did get two shorthanded goals in this series and six total in the entire playoff run. Ended up going 14 for 19 in this series against the Panthers. 73.7% .7 is not too bad. Next up here, talking about Igor Shesterkin. He was amazing once again. He has consistently proven to be a playoff performer. He may not have had the best overall regular season for his standards, but in the playoffs, he once again showed that he is a phenomenal goalie in the playoffs. Ended up having 16 games played, 10 wins, 6 losses, a 2.34 goals against average, a 9.27 save percentage. He was absolutely elite. He was a definite definition of elite he was a huge part in why this team made it so far in the playoffs and got all the way to game six of the eastern conference finals he bailed this team out time in and time out he was amazing and now taking a look here at a quote from paul maurice the florida panthers head coach he says quote i haven't seen a series by a goaltender like that since jose theodore in 2002 Paul Maurice says that Igor Shesterkin was, quote, brilliant in this series. And I definitely agree with what Paul said there. Igor was fantastic. And obviously, Paul Maurice agrees. And if you didn't know, back in 2002, Jose Theodore was the Vesna winner there, the best goalie in the league, and also won the MVP as well. He was the best goaltender in the entire NHL, won the heart that year, won the Vesna. He was amazing, had a pretty solid playoff run as well. So obviously, Paul Maurice is giving quite high praise there to Igor Sturkin. And honestly, Igor, like I said, he was amazing this series. He definitely was the best player on either team in this Eastern Conference Finals matchup. Next up, let's talk about some of the star players who were quite disappointing in this series against the Panthers. We ended up seeing Artemi Panarin get one goal, three assists for four points in six games played. That may seem all right, but overall, he did not create enough offensively. This is a guy making over $11 million per season. He's got to be able to create more offensively. He needs to be a massive factor in these games, and he just was not that at all in this series, unfortunately, and also did not help much on the power play either. Then we've got Mika Zibanejad, who ended up getting two assists, zero goals in six games played. He also had an 11-game stretch without a single goal scored, which also went into that series against the Panthers. That was terrible there, not getting a single goal, only getting two points in six games played. Four guys who's supposed to be a top-line caliber center, you know, making $8.5 million per season. He has to do a better job on the power play and at 5-1-5. That was just not good enough. Then we have Chris Kreider, who ended up getting one goal, one 
assists in six games played in that series against the Panthers. That's just not good enough there. Panarin, Zibanejad, and Kreider are all guys who are on power play one. They get a lot of ice time, and they have to be able to produce at a much higher level. They're getting paid quite a bit. They're supposed to be true top six, top line caliber guys, and they just did not show that at all in this series. And then we have guys like Lafreniere and Trocek, though, who I think played fantastic throughout this entire playoff run, but also in this series as well. I mean, Lafreniere ended up getting four goals, and they were all Pretty great goals as well in that series against the Panthers. He was great. Trocek put up some phenomenal numbers as well. He ended up getting six points in six games played there. Two goals, four assists. He looked really good. And then Adam Fox there as well. He didn't play the best overall hockey, I think, for my opinion, for his overall kind of standards. But he was injured, obviously. Definitely not 100%. He had four assists there. Six games played. Definitely did not play too bad for being, you know, obviously not at 100%. And now let's just talk about some of the issues that I noticed in this series as a whole. Losing too many puck battles was a massive one. The Panthers are definitely a very strong team, but this team needs to be tougher. They got to be stronger. They need to want the puck more, and they just didn't get the job done enough there in those puck battles in front of the net or in the corners, along the boards, wherever it was. The Rangers didn't come out with enough pucks in those battles. They just have to do a much better job. And the Panthers are a very tough team. I think that's pretty clear there. They're a very strong team. And the Rangers need to add some more grit, some more toughness, some more strength in this offseason to really make this team a whole lot better overall. I think that could go a long way for this team because you're going to play teams like the Panthers. I mean, most teams aren't as tough as the Panthers are, but a lot of the teams in the playoffs, they got a lot of grit, a lot of toughness, and those are the teams that make it a very long way. Then we also have a factor here, which I think the Rangers were just a slower team as well against the Panthers, who were a tougher team. They were also a faster team, in my opinion, as well. Then we have all also, too many defensive zone mistakes and turnovers, and we saw a lot of that in this series. Not being able to clear the puck out, or we try to, and then just getting flicked up the ice there. The Panthers bat it down to the blue line. They get the puck there, or grab it in the midair, whatever it is. They stop from getting out of the zone, and the Panthers keep possession. And also goes to my next point there of too much defensive zone time there. The Panthers did a great job putting on a lot of pressure offensively, which was another factor that the Rangers couldn't do themselves. Sustained pressure offensively was a big issue. Rangers got stuck in their own zone a lot and couldn't create enough offensively, which obviously had a massive factor on this series. I mean, being stuck in your own zone that much, you're going to get a lot more tired there because when you're attacking and you're consistently having a lot of offensive zone pressure, you're not going to be as tired because you're not chasing the puck around. You're more of just moving it around and kind of creating offensively. You're not going to get as tired. So being stuck in your own zone that much definitely tires of the guys and obviously makes them a much worse hockey team when you're as gassed as they were in this series. And now taking a look at a couple quotes here, one from Peter Laviolette, the Rangers head coach, and one from Adam Fox, the star defenseman. The first one here from Molly Walker, Laviolette says, quote, our guys fought this year. They bought in right from the start. They fought. We made it to this point. It's disappointing. When you start something like this, you don't do it to get three wins in the playoffs or five wins in the playoffs. You do it to go the whole way. So there's a disappointment right now that sets in for sure with regard to our group and our intentions that we had throughout the course of the year. And this team obviously was a team who was a true Stanley Cup contender. They ended up being a Final Four team in the entire NHL, ended up going all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals. They had a great run. They made a dumb money. They played some great hockey. They won the President's Trophy this year, being the best team in the regular season, which always is not the end goal, but they were still great in regular season there, had a good playoff run, ended up winning, you know, two rounds there getting all the way to round three, losing in game six there. They had a good run. A lot of guys did play their butt off there. They played some fantastic hockey. Igor Sturk and Lafrey and Trocek, Barclay Gaudreau. There's some of the guys as well. They played fantastic, but some of the guys definitely fell a little short there in my opinion. And now taking a look at the quote from Adam Fox here from Vince Bercagliano. Fox says, quote, we were first place in the league all year. Obviously, we thought we could win the whole thing. Whenever you got a guy like that in net, you're Sturkin, you always have a chance, even two years ago, and this year was no different. The goal from training camp was to win a cup, and we came up short. And that's what happened there. When you have a goalie like Igor Sturkin, though, you obviously, as a fan especially as well, I mean, you believe that you can win the cup. I mean, I know this team is not perfect. They don't have the overall you know, toughness or necessarily speed, maybe, that some other teams do that do win cups, but... This team has, I would say, the best goaltender in the playoffs year in and year out. He has shown that he is a top-tier goaltender, a top-tier playoff performer in Igor Sturk, and he's an amazing goalie. And when you have a guy like that, sometimes they can truly carry you a very, very long way and potentially really help you win a Stanley Cup as well. 
Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please smash the like button. Don't forget to comment down below your thoughts on that series against the Panthers and on these playoffs as a whole, as the Rangers fan, obviously. And also, don't forget to subscribe for daily New York Rangers content. Even throughout this offseason, I will keep you updated constantly with daily videos about the New York Rangers and all things happening with this team. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next one. See you later.